Good evening. It's Saturday, the 16th of August. You're tuned in to our 10 p.m. newscast coming to you from Arirang's news centre in Seoul. It's great to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this evening. Close to one million people filled the streets of central Seoul on Saturday morning to watch Pope Francis beatify dozens of Korean martyrs who were killed for their faith over two centuries ago. Cheers rang through the air when Francis declared the 124 pioneers of the Korean Catholic Church blessed and one step closer to sainthood. Our Jim Young Gil starts us off. The beatification of Paul Yoon Ji Chung and 123 fellow martyrs was held at Kwanmun Square in Central Seoul, with hundreds of thousands of people in attendance. Those blessed by the Pope were among the 10,000 Korean believers killed for their faith by the rulers of the Joseon dynasty in the 18th and 19th centuries. Beatification brings them one step closer to sainthood. Today, we celebrate this victory in Paul Yoon Ji Chung and his 123 companions. Their names now stand alongside those of the holy martyrs Andrew Kim Taegon, Paul Chong Hasang, and companions to whom I just paid homage. The beatification comes 30 years after Pope John Paul II canonized 103 Korean martyrs, all made saints long after losing their lives well over a century ago. During his sermon, Pope Francis delivered a message that the laity had played an important role in Korean Catholicism. The Christian faith was not brought to the shores of Korea through missionaries. Rather, it entered through the hearts and minds of the Korean people themselves. It was prompted by intellectual curiosity, the search for religious truth. Many who attended the Mass were overcome with excitement over bearing witness to the historic event, as well as being in the presence of Pope Francis. I was baptized yesterday. I'm very thankful and happy to be here for the Pope's Mass. I feel blessed by God. I really don't know what to say. I'm overwhelmed with joy. I attended a Papal Mass 25 years ago, and I'm here again today. I thank God. The Mass was also attended by the families of the victims who so tragically lost their lives in April's Hero Ferry sinking. There were also laid off workers and people with physical disabilities. With just two days remaining, Pope Francis is scheduled to hold a closing Mass for Asian Youth Day tomorrow and a Reconciliation Mass next Monday on his last day before heading back to the Vatican. Tim Young Gil, Arirang News. And following the uh, mass beatification ceremony in Seoul, Pope Francis took a short helicopter ride down to Korea's central Chungcheong Bukdo province to, to visit a welfare facility for people with disabilities. Our Guan Soa was there and filed this report. Gwangamun Square in Seoul was not the only place flooded with people on Saturday for the Pope's visit. Some 30,000 visitors greeted Pope Francis in Kotongne, or Flower Village, in the city of Umsong on Saturday afternoon, waving hands, flags, and chanting Viva Papa. I was a little nervous because it was the first time I would meet the Pope. But it was so great to see him, especially because there is only one Pope. It feels like my entire family has been blessed as we came here to meet the Pope. I'm so happy. Thank you. The Pope arrived at the House of Hope, where the sick, old and disabled were waiting to be blessed. Forty children with disabilities were among them, and he listened to their dreams, kissed and hugged them. Pope Francis was also touched by some special presents he received, such as an embroidered picture of him and a paper crane folded by a 74-year-old with her toes as she cannot use her hands. Pope Francis also paid a visit to the Garden of Unborn Children to pray for the aborted children at the cemetery. 
afterwards, around 4,400 Catholic believers gathered for an evening prayer led by the Pope. But due to a longer than planned meeting with the disabled children, a mass prayer was unfortunately cancelled. The Pope was expected to say some lines in Korean. Nevertheless, the religious followers were very touched by the short meeting. I felt he came as an apostle of peace to give solace to suffering, and I felt at peace because of his visit. Pope Francis said farewell to the flower village, leaving a huge impression on the poor, the sick, the children, as well as the laity, to whom he asked to multiply their efforts in assisting those in need. Kwon Soa, Arirang News, Eumseong. Now, in the rest of the day's news, North Korea has condemned South Korea's efforts to encourage the international community to collectively urge Pyongyang to give up its nuclear ambitions, calling Seoul's move a quote-unquote blind act of beggars. Referring to the ASEAN regional forum that came to a close just last weekend, the North State-run newspaper Nodong Shimun uh, on Saturday slammed South Korean Foreign Minister Yoon byung se for stressing at the forum the importance of a unified international effort to counter Pyongyang's nuclear threats. The North also threatened to reinforce its nuclear arms capacity should Seoul and Washington, Washington continue with their, quote, provocations that are pushing the peninsula to the brink of war. A South Korean lawmaker has re released a report that's sure to heat up the debate on the naming of the sea between Korea and Japan. In a report to the National Assembly's Foreign Affairs and Unification Committee on Saturday, main opposition uh, New Politics Alliance for Democracy representative Che Che Chan found that in the vast majority of OECD member states, school textbooks only refer to the body of water as the Sea of Japan and make no mention uh, to the Korean name East Sea. Only six countries, including Britain, Germany and Italy, said there were two names for the body of water and no countries only used the Korean name. Many Koreans see the name Sea of Japan as a cruel reminder of Japan's imperialist past as it was registered when the country was under Japanese colonial rule, meaning Korea had absolutely no say on the matter. In regards to Korea's easternmost Dr. Island, which you can see there, the report says, textbooks in the Czech Republic and Australia incorrectly state Dokdo is uh, Japanese territory. Now, while we here in Korea have been blessed by the visit of Pope Francis, the utter horror continues for religious minorities in uh, Iraq. Jihadists from Islamic State have reportedly executed at least 80 Yazidi men who refused to convert to Islam, their wives and female relatives kidnapped to be used as slaves or to be sold. Our Song ji -son has the latest on this and other developments regarding the crisis. Convert to Islam or die. That's how the Islamic State fighters, also known as ISIS, are slaying religious minorities in Iraq. At least 80 Yazidi men were reportedly executed after Islamic State fighters swept into a Yazidi village in northern Iraq on Friday afternoon local time, and more than 100 women were captured. The Yazidis, numbering some 400,000, are one of Iraq's smallest and oldest religious minorities and have been fleeing since June when ISIS swept across the border from Syria into Iraq. Before Friday, an estimated 500 Yazidis had been executed by ISIS fighters. Early Saturday morning, U.S. warplanes carried out airstrikes in northern Iraq to help Kurdish fighters retake areas near a key dam in Mosul, which is still controlled by the radical Islamists. After an emergency foreign minister's meeting, the European Union said it welcomes U.S. intervention in the situation. But many are pinning their hopes on Iraq's prime minister-designate, Haider al-Abadi, bringing together Iraq's ethnic and religious groups to fight a common enemy in ISIS. In the meantime, the UN Security Council has unanimously adopted a resolution aimed at curbing financial and military support for the Islamic State fighters. The resolution sanctions six people who the council says are the financiers and supporters of ISIS action in Iraq and Syria, 
by freezing their assets and banning them from traveling. Song Ji-seon, Arirang News. Now, on a much lighter note, Korean period blockbuster Roaring Currents has sailed past Avatar to become the all-time most successful film at the Korean box office. The Korean Film Council said the movie, which tells the tale of Admiral Lee Sun Shin's famous naval victory against the Japanese in the 16th century, became the most watched movie at theaters in the country as of Friday, as it ticked past Avatar's previous record of 13.62 million. Roaring Currents only came out about two and a half weeks ago, so it's poised to go even higher than that. The movie, directed by Kim Han Min uh, and starring uh, Che Min Shik as Admiral E, is also the most successful Korean film of all time, having broken the record set by the host some eight years ago. And those are the stories we have for you at this hour. For more of the latest stories, don't forget to check out our website, adidang.co.kr forward slash news. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye.